years, the Odd Fellows called their uh, building here several different names. And when I uh, ruffled through some old stationery upstairs in the attic or in one of the closets, uh, I found that at one time they had called it the Star of Hope. And since I've, uh, stars have always been one of my favorite motifs, why that, that was the one I chose. This is also Casa de Moor. I mean, you know, it's not only the Star of Hope, it's Casa de Moor. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, love is, love is still the most important thing. It all comes from a little painting which is now in the uh, Portland Museum of Art. Uh, there were four stars, two stacked on two, with the word, just the regular word love down at the bottom, and that gave me the idea that the letters could be stacked as the stars were stacked. And uh, just at that time, the Museum of Modern Art commissioned me to do a Christmas card for the museum and that I submitted three designs or three color variations and of course they chose the one that became best known, the red, blue and green and that became the most popular Christmas card the museum had ever issued. It is of course my goal that love should cover the world and that it should uh, individually, uh, it is growing and we're laying plans to make uh, a 24-foot log. And uh, it's like Mount Everest, we all know what the highest mountain in the world is. And uh, the larger love gets, the more attention it will receive. And of course, I have restricted myself to the English language. Uh, Ahava is the Hebrew word for love, and, and now I've uh, involved with the Chinese word for love, which by coincidence happens to be I, and I, of course, is my first initial. Love wins out in the end, you see, and as far as I'm concerned, that's as it should be. The most important person in my life who greatly influenced me, of course, was Elspeth Kelly. And uh, our meeting was just pure chance. Uh, I'd been working for three years in an art store on 57th Street. 
and I had gotten up to the position of being able to arrange the uh, windows and uh, I put postcards uh, on display and one day someone came in and asked for uh, Matisse's uh, Still Life with Oysters and that person happened to be Ellsworth Kelly. I was desperately in the need of a new studio and he just happened to uh, know uh, someone down on Quanti Slip who had some empty buildings available and uh, steered me to my first loft on Quanti Slip was $30 a month. And that was uh, the beginning of my most, most productive period was on Quanti Slip. And so for several years we were neighbors on Quinty Slip and then his uh, old painter friend from uh, France, Jack Youngerman, uh, moved to the Slip with his wife who was the French actress Delphine Sarig. Then Agnes Martin showed up and uh, then James Rosenquist was another customer of, my, customer of mine at the art store and he came and brought his friend uh, Charles Hinman and uh, pretty soon we had a colony. Very private little uh, enclave, all within three blocks of each other. Uh, unfortunately, they began tearing those old buildings down, and we all had to clear out. Around 65, we were gone. For the early part of my life, I was simply uh, a figurative painter. Uh, it was only when I uh, met Ellsworth Kelly that I stopped being uh, an American realist and became uh, what I am now. I was stuck with the dilemma of being too much influenced by Ellsworth. I had to make some kind of a radical departure and that was the addition of the word and then shortly thereafter, uh, Ellsworth never spoke to me again. You see. He didn't like paintings that had words, and I'm afraid many, many people in the art world didn't like paintings that had words. Uh, I've always considered myself the least pop of the pop artists, but uh, given the my place in time and what happened in the art world, uh, I can't I can't escape that designation. None of us uh, really liked that term at the beginning. Uh, other other terms were used: new realists, uh, vulgarians, all kinds of things. And then Lawrence Alloway's uh, pop stuck, and then and we were stuck. I consider my work uh, primarily autobiographical. Every, every, almost everything I've done has some relationship to something in my life. I am painting and writing my own history.